Okay. So I sent you the agenda. I just wanted to give you an update on the, all of our um, grants have been submitted and resubmitted, um, except the ESSER and the GEAR, and that's that CARES Act funding that replaced our state aid loss. Um, so what the change was there, they unsubmitted it and made us re resubmit it um, because now the private schools are eligible for some of that funding that was initially ours. So um, we have, that I know about, we have students in two private schools. So the um, Christian Academy, and we have five that are eligible there. And then there's a Hebrew school in Albany where we have three students. And so those students are also eligible. So in total, um, getting their signed forms back and then I can resubmit. So in total, um, $5,750 of our CARES Act funding will go to the private schools. So, I mean, I guess it could have been worse, but we are gonna lose you know, $5,700 of that. Um, and then ironically, actually one of them said, oh gee, now that we know we're eligible for some of your funding, you should be giving us some of your Title I grant too. So now they're gonna go after some of the Title I funding too. But it should, there's not that many students, so it shouldn't be too, too bad. But um, anyway, just so you know where we are with that and that we have everything. I know Colleen's been working really hard too to get everything resubmitted um, on the other grants too. So um, just wanted to give you an update on that. Um, as far as tax collection goes, uh, we did great this year. Honestly, we were surprised. Um, we collected 94%. We generally collect, you know, not 91 to 92%. So um, we collected more than we normally do. And um, so it's about 1.2 million that's going back to the county for relevy. Um, I think probably it sounds like they will need to take their two years again where we used to you know they they used to take two years and then they made us whole um i think because you know if they have a cash crunch and they're allowed to pay us over two years they probably will so but it's not a huge it's not a huge number it's not a huge hit you know that i thought that we thought it would be so i'm guessing we'll get six hundred thousand somewhere around there this year and then they'll push 600 till next year is my guess so um, um, I don't know if you had any, oh, and the, as far as adjustments go, you know, we usually get the adjustments where there was an incorrect tax bill, things like that. Most of them this year were STAR, which we can get back from the state. Um, so there were only $746 worth of, you know, assessment adjustments that um, we need to, that we'll, we'll lose. So that's really not bad at all. So we did we did pretty well with the tax collection that's this year. Improvement, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. So so, so if what you're saying is we, we got six hundred thousand though that would have been in our budget that we're not probably going to have because they're going to stretch it back out. Right, and I I mean eventually we'll get it. Yeah, well but we got the, we got the benefit of the double dip when they went this direction, and now we're going to have just the opposite. It's mostly, so, it's mostly a cash flow, right. um, but it could actually- it's, it's accrual, yeah, it's the same accrual wise, but cash flow wise. Oh, you found so, it. So we won't put it in as a revenue if we know they're gonna pay it over you know, next year because we won't receive it within 90 days. So what it will do is it'll take our fund balance down instead of before, right. like you're saying, it took the fund balance up. And if we're gonna get it eventually, that's not necessarily a bad thing because then that gives us you know, the money later when we need it. So, so when do they have to, when, when would they let us know what they're planning to do in that regard? Well, generally they um, pay their portion or they pay us, you know, what we sent to them for relevy in April. So by, you know, before the budget vote, we should know. We should have a good idea. I would think, um, you know, hit, I would think that they would communicate with us before that what their plan is, just so we could, um, you know, take that into account when we're budgeting. Okay. Thank you. Um, 
Okay, and I, I just wanted to give you um, an update about the health insurance and also um, we need to discuss the possibility of a buyout. So with the health insurance, you know, we've been looking into the Medigap, which could save us potentially, you know, $500,000. Um, I've also requested our claims history to send to KCP. When I met with them, I was looking at their premiums and their premiums are for our regular health insurance, they're about the same as what we pay now. So right now, I don't know that there would be a huge savings to switch the plan, except that I went to the Case BP meeting and Amy, um, we both went to the Broom Tioga meeting. So I went to that same meeting for Case BP and they're talking about, um, you know, a 0% increase where ours is talking about a 5%, you know, base increase. So there, there would be some savings there if, you know, they had the same, because it has to be the same or a better plan in order to switch, um, which theirs is very, it's, it's the same as ours. So they have the information. So I'm waiting now to get, um, you know, an, an estimate of what our premiums might look like if we did switch. Um, and then, you know, we would also definitely do the Medigap plan. So... Ours is looking into that now, ironically, after we said, you know, we're going to have to pull these out. So now they're looking at it too. Lisa, when you when you say the Medigap will save us 500,000, is that in a year? Yes. It's big. It's big. Yeah. So it's, okay. it's something we have to look at. And, yeah. um, you know, the other thing that our plan said is, okay, well, you know, these retirees are helping pay for the active. So if you pull them out, you know, your premiums would go up more than normal. So that's why I think it's really important that we look at the case BP because they don't say that. So, you know, if we can keep the same premium and save $500,000 a year through the Medigap, I mean, that's just, that's a win all around. Did the new company understand that we weren't gonna have the retirees? Yes, they're the ones that would provide the Medigap plan oh. if ours didn't. Okay. So I met with them initially to talk about Medigap, but then, you know, we started looking at their premiums. Okay. Um, so they could potentially, you know, we could, we need, we need, to, and, and we are moving on it. We're getting the estimates, but that would be probably a July 1st um, start if we switched plans. Um, because I, a lot of it has to do with the communication to people, you know, with people's health insurance, you can't mess without, without communicating a lot. Um, the Medigap plan, I think we could get in place before that, before July 1st. So we could have some potential savings this year. But again, that's communication. Um, but one of the things we did want to talk to the committee about is, um, you know, it's about $10,000, the premiums. So do we, do we maybe offer our retirees a buyout to just drop it completely? Um, you know, before we even get into the Medigap, do we say we'll pay you $10,000 if you don't need the health insurance and you're willing to drop it? You know, or, or Tom and I had talked um, just a little bit today about maybe, maybe what I um, can do is send out a letter to the retirees to even gauge the interest in that. And then, you know, if, the, if it looks like there's some interest, you know, why don't we offer them something? and pay for it with the savings. You're muted. Can you put something um, in writing for us to take a look at before you do that? So so we could get an idea of, of costs and savings yep. and things like that. That'd yep. be helpful. Thank you. Yep. I'll get that out to you tomorrow. I, I have all the information in a folder, so let me pull it all together on one sheet of paper and send that out to you. And then maybe we can make some, yeah, decision on that. Yeah, what well, might be helpful for us would be helpful for them too, because, you know, the population is obviously averse to change for the most part. So it's gonna have to be pretty spelled out to be not uh, punitive in any regard for them to even think about it, I'm sure. Yeah. And I have talked to other schools that have done this, this Medigap plan. Um, and they said that they had no complaints after they switched over. So it actually is, you know, it's the same or better benefit. So, but, but you're right. It is the communication with people 
um, that's going to be the key to that. So yes, I will, I will definitely get that information out to you tomorrow. Okay. And I'll be looking at the Medicap plan for myself now too. Tom can start tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the Medigap is just for the 65 and older population. So we do have retirees that That's have. That's what I meant. <laughs> so. um, okay. Yes. Yeah, so we can look at that. Um, I did want to just give you a little bit of an update with the fund balance. Um, and let me find my file. Generally, we spend um, within a couple hundred thousand of what our actual revenues are. So last year, I think we spent about 110,000 more. Um, so that was, that would, you know, how we put the million dollars of fund balance toward our budget. So we used 110 of that, not the million. So um, this year, as I was looking through our fund balance, and right now it's so unpredictable. I can't give you a bottom line fund balance because I have no idea what the revenues are going to be. But as far as the expenditures go, I think we're going to be about 1.3 million under budget. And some of that came from, um, so we have obviously the athletic savings. We have some utility savings that we're expecting. Um, we have, a, you know, significantly less substitute costs right now. Um, and then as our payroll goes down, um, you know, the benefits, the payroll taxes and things and retirements on that go down as well. Um, with special ed, we're down probably half million or, you know, between four and 500,000 because we had a couple students in, well, a few students in some high cost programs. One of them moved out of the state. One of them is no longer here for other reasons. Um, so we've had some of the students that we had planned to send to different programs that are not here anymore. So I think, you know, and then plus we took the 20% off already of the supplies. Um, so with all of those right now, and you know, who knows what could happen tomorrow, but with all of those right now, it looks like we're going to have some savings in our budget and that could help us absorb what our state aid, you know, um, what, what they don't give us that could help us absorb that. So I think through this year, we should be okay. Um, next year could be a problem, but we're working really hard on, you know, some significant health insurance savings and, and things like that. So um, I just wanted to let you know where we were with that and why, um, so that you know that we're, we're looking at the, the gap. If we do have a state aid cut, the gap wouldn't be, you know, as, as hard for us this year. So because of our um, unspent, you know, budget. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think as we discuss this in public, not that this meeting is in public, but uh, obviously our teachers helped us with our budget, you know, by taking a zero and to suddenly have a, what well, might at least in the short run look like a ballooning fund balance um, I think it's important to have a, a parallel contingency amount that we think we might have to have to show that we truly might not have the surplus um, just for, you know, rather overt communication purposes. Okay. If I'm saying that delicately enough. <laughs> no, I, I know what you're saying. So if we had, um, and I, I kind of wrote that out. If we had, you know, just say the 20% aid loss, the 3.3 million, and then right. we spent, you know, 1.5 million less, that takes, a, you know, that closes the gap a little bit there. Um, we had a couple hundred thousand additional BOCES refund. So that helps close the gap. Um, so, yes, yeah, I, it could, I know yeah, what it you're saying. It could, easily be all, it could easily be all spent, obviously, but... Uh... The timing of how that works could be different. Right, right. So our savings and in in the expenditures could absorb the loss on the revenue side. So that's another yeah. thing, I guess, you know, I'll put that on a one page document so, so it's easier to see. And, you know, with the, the work that the teachers did for us kept our deficit only at $3 million. <laughs> right, right. 
And we do, I mean, we still, for 3.3, we would still potentially have to use the million that we budgeted from our fund balance. So, but I, I guess the point is it could be, it could be worse and we did, you know, we do appreciate what they did, but it just, it's gonna help us absorb that loss if we have it from the state. But, but you're right, it is, it is gonna be difficult to negotiate that because they, you know, they are gonna see things for how they perceive them. Um, they're, they're gonna say, you know what, we haven't run athletics, we haven't run clubs, you know, so, um, and they're gonna say, you know, because I need to start having these conversations with the OTA now, um, but they're gonna say, look, we don't even know where we're gonna be you know, in order to have these conversations, but we're gonna, we're gonna have to start somewhere, so. The interesting thing is the, the state uh, revenues are actually up. I know it. September over September. Yes. And a lot of that, you know, which you think, how can that possibly be? Uh, you know, our, we closed our economy down. Yep. But in New York, compared to other, you know, other states, we tax, you know, Wall Street and the wealthy and and by and large, the, the stock market has gone up. Right. So that's really been helpful for the state. The problem is we came, you know, with a six and a half billion dollar hole before we started it at COVID. So therein lies the the rub, I guess, you know. So I mean I just I just was on a meeting today on um, kind of a macro post election conference and uh, and the, the feeling is the there will be more stimulus, but it will really be targeted towards what it's supposed to and not be a catch all, uh, i.e. helping the states that already came in and, you know, with a previous problem. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I guess the good news, the state's in better shape COVID wise than we thought it would be. So uh, I don't know if that 3.3 million will materialize or not. I guess we'll have to wait and see, but uh, I, I couldn't help but think that's a little better news than I was expecting. Yeah. Yeah. They do make it really difficult when they make, you know, make it come through as a grant too. We've been really, really struggling with the grants this year. So if they make that, you know, more restrictive, uh, I mean, we'll make it work obviously to get the money, but they are making it difficult. Well, I think whenever we talk about the $3.3 million deficit, we always lead off with the teachers that helped us, you know, first with their money um, and just keep nailing home that, you know, that was a necessary thing and that we're so grateful. Well, that was, yeah, well, was that six or 700,000, wasn't it, Tom? You're muted. <laughs> Lisa, was it around like four seventy five in that? Yeah, I, I think it was around a half a million dollars. Five hundred, okay. Yeah. And then you know, by the time you add some benefits on there, it gets higher. Yeah. Still. Yeah. It was a lot. It was a lot. Yeah. 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 That's why I was telling Lisa, I bet you this year they're going to be looking for four, you know, to start chipping away at, at what they lost. And I get it. I get it. You know, when you hit your tee shot in the woods, you can't get it all back in one swing. Sometimes you just got to punch out and take a little bit at a time. Bill, that's good to know because that's never worked for me. It's always taken like two or three shots to just get back on the fairway. You, okay. saw, the, you saw the 10 that Tiger Woods shot on the 12th hole, didn't you? Yep. <laughs> Listen, that's a pain I feel every time I set foot on the golf course. <laughs> Um, all right. So anyway, well, unless you have some questions, we'll just, we'll keep, you know, on top of that, looking at the expenditures and I'll, I'll put together a one page that maybe I can keep pulling out maybe at the board meetings, just for informational moving forward, since we are going into budget season. So it'd be good to have that right out there in the open. So that's a good idea. I'll, I'll do that. Um, all right, so there's not really much on the financial memorandum for tomorrow. Um, there's a donation from the Clothing Guild and they donate every year just to help with the necessities for students that might need it. Um, and so Greater Plains and Valley View still have money left from last year. 
so they donated to Riverside and Middle School. Um, the Job Corps, it's, uh, yeah, the Job Corps is if we are allowed to do testing again, um, then we will do the GED testing here. So that just allows us if we open up for testing again. Um, there's not really anything else on there. So, um, and then as far as budget development, um, Tom and I briefly just talked about it. We'll get the, I'll get the calendar out there, kind of a schedule. Um, we're trying to look at what we have hanging out there that we have to put in for the budget, like the, you know, negotiations. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be hard to put together something until we know what our revenues will be also. Um, we know our TRS is around 10%. Um, our health insurance we're looking at now, so hopefully we'll have some savings there. But um, anyway, that's where we are right now. We're starting to look at what our actual personnel looks at looks like right now, not what we budgeted, but what they what it looks like right now, and then go from there. So um, Tom and I will be working on that initially, but we should start, um, you know, talking about the budget for next year. Anyway. Um, what uh, what contracts are up? Anybody? OTA. And OTA the, is, huh? Principals are up this year as well. Okay. Uh, CSEA has another year, I believe. Um, June 30, 2021. Okay. I, I think they extend, didn't they extend that out another year somewhere? Oh, did they? Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know. That's I'd have that one in. And clerical has another year. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. I did. I really didn't have anything else for this meeting. I don't know if you had anything. No. Nothing from me for now. Okay. So I'll get that information out to you about the health insurance and the um, the fund balance information on a one page, hopefully easy to read sheet, but you can give me your feedback and then we can um, maybe use that for public in the future just to get us rolling. Okay. All right. Well, I guess that was quick and easy. <laughs> So we'll see everybody tomorrow. Unless you a model, a model for tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll try. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Good night.